Let's get started on today's notes over simplifying, multiplying, and dividing rational expressions. So a rational expression, we're going to be dealing with fractions today. So first, let's review how to simplify rational expressions. And the first thing that you always want to do when you're simplifying rationals is factor, if possible. So not everything is factorable, but if you can factor it, you need to factor it first. And then we'll be eliminating common factors. So we'll eliminate common factors. So let's look at these first two examples. So in number one, I've got 45 x cubed y to the fifth z over 9x squared y z to the seventh. So the first thing I want to do is simplify the coefficients. So 45 and 9, I can simplify that to be 5. So I'm actually going to rewrite it like this. 5, and then I could put a 1 in my denominator, but I'm not going to. And then I just simplify using the quotient rule. But how I'm going to do this is, do I have more x's on top or on bottom? On top, how many more? Just one more. And if you use the quotient rule, that would be x to the power of 3 minus 2, which is x to the power of 1, which is just x. So that's how I simplified the x's. And now let's look at the y's. I've got more y's on top than on bottom. How many more? Four more. So y to the fourth. And I could use the quotient rule there as well. Looking at the third variable, z, I have more z's on bottom. How many more? Six. So that's going to be z to the power of six. And if I use the quotient rule, I would get z to the power of one minus seven which is z to the power of negative 6. z to the power of negative 6 is the same thing as 1 over z to the power of positive 6. So that's how I wrote that one. Let's look at number 2. In this example, I've got a quadratic trinomial in my numerator and a quadratic trinomial in my denominator. So the first thing I'm going to do is simplify those. Now, these are very easy to simplify because the leading coefficient is 1. So I need two numbers that multiply to negative 16 and add to positive 6. Those numbers are positive 8 and negative 2. So this factors into x plus 8 times x minus 2. In my denominator, I need two numbers that multiply to 32 and add to positive 12. Those numbers are 4 and 8. So my factors are x plus 4 times x plus 8. And so we factored, that's our first step. The second thing we're going to do is eliminate common factors. So if I have the same thing or term in my numerator as I do in my denominator, those can I can eliminate those. Okay, so x plus 8 over x plus 8. x plus 8 divided by x plus 8 is just 1. So I can cancel those out. And I'm left with x minus 2 over x plus 4. And that's my answer. So let's move on now to multiplying rationals. When we multiply rationals, the first thing we're going to do is still factor, if possible. You always want to factor first. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll eliminate common factors. And I call this cross-canceling or pre-canceling. So we're going to cross-cancel some common factors. So this is how you saw it in sixth grade. Okay, looking at, looking at example number three, I have two-thirds times nine-eighths. I don't know what you remembered or what you, if you sang anything whenever you multiplied fractions, but we've always sang in my class, multiplying fractions ain't no problem. It's the top times the top and the bottom times the bottom. So you just multiply across. So I could do two times nine is 18 over three times eight is 24, and then I could simplify. But you can also do what I call pre-canceling or cross-canceling. For example, 2 and 8 have a common factor. That factor is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So I can pre-simplify these factors. If you notice, 3 and 9 have a common factor. It's 3. 3 goes into 3 one time. 3 goes into 3 nine times. I'm sorry, 3 goes into 9 three times. And now it's already simplified when I multiply across. 1 times 3 is 3 over 1 times 4 is 4. It's already simplified. Boom. That's my answer. It's 3 fourths. So when we get into an example like number 4, 
the first thing we want to do is factor. So let's factor our first fraction, if you will, right here. So x squared minus 9. Well, that's the difference of squares. So how would that factor? x plus 3 times x minus 3. Let's look at the denominator. 10x plus 5. Well, I can factor out a GCF. What is that GCF? It's 5. And what am I left with? 2x plus 1. So we factored that first fraction times. Now let's factor the next one. The next one in my numerator, how does that factor? Well, I've got a GCF. That GCF is 2 times x. And what am I left with when I factor out that GCF? 2x plus 1. Let's look at the denominator. Again, I have a GCF, 2x squared minus 6x. That GCF is 2x. And what am I left with? x minus 3. So now I can use this same method that we did in number 3, where if I have the same thing on top that I do on bottom, I could cancel or pre-simplify, okay, because I have common factors. So let's find those common factors. Well, I have 2x and 2x, those can cancel. x minus 3 and x minus 3 can cancel. 2x plus 1 and 2x plus 1 can cancel. And what am I left with? x plus 3 over 5. So if you're kind of confused at this point, um, one of the things that uh, examples that I've shown my students in the past is if you were to simplify, for example, if you were to simplify, let's say 12 over, let's just say 3, okay? 12 over 3. So you probably know what that is. 12 divided by 3 is 4, but back in the day, you may have written this out, uh, use your written out the prime factorization of 12. So if I were to do the prime factorization of 12, I might say 4 times 3. 3 is prime. I can break down 4. That's 2 times 2. Okay, so the prime factorization of 12 is 2 times 2 times 3 over 3. Okay, and now if you have the same thing on top that you do on bottom, you could cancel those out. You may not have done it this way, but I know when I taught sixth grade, I taught it this way sometimes. Okay, so, or um, they knew what I was talking about because they had seen it in fifth grade. So now if I were to rewrite this, two times two is four over one, which is just four. So that was a way that you could simplify it. And we're just using that same method, but with rational expressions, algebra two version, okay? So let's move on to the next set of examples, dividing rationals. When we divide, again, let me change colors here just because I want to, if I can. So the first thing you're going to do is factor, if possible. So we're still going to factor, but now because we're dividing, we're going to multiply and flip the second fraction. So you might have, you might recall the keep change flip. So keep, change, flip, or copy, change, flip, and then we'll just do what we just did, eliminate common factors. So this is what it looked like when you were in sixth grade. Let's say two-fifths divided by three-twentieths. So when I'm dividing fractions, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So you might have seen this as keep the first fraction, change this to multiply, multiply, and flip this to 20 over 3. And now we're back to where we just were. So I'm going to pre-simplify this. I have some common factors in 5 and 20. It's 5. 5 goes into 5 one time. 5 goes into 20 four times, or 20 divided by 5 is 4. And now I can just multiply across. 2 times 4 is 8, over 1 times 3 is 3. So my answer is 8 thirds. So the first thing we want to do is factor, then flip and multiply. Flip the second fraction and multiply, and then we're back to where we were in our last set of examples. So let's see what this looks like, Algebra 2 version. So what I'm going to do whenever I am solving number 6 is I'm going to flip and factor in the same step. And I'm going to write that down. Flip and factor in 
the same step. Okay, so the first in this first fraction right here, one cannot be factored over, what would I do with 4x squared minus 25? How would that factor? That's a difference of squares. How is it going to factor? 2x plus 5 times 2x minus 5. Now I'm going to flip and factor in the same step. So I'm going to change this to multiply, and I'm going to flip the second fraction, but I'm going to multiply it, or um, I'm going to factor it at the same time. So let's factor this top trinomial right here. And that's just a basic trinomial, two numbers that multiply to negative 2 and add to negative 1. Well, those numbers are negative 2 and positive 1, okay? Because negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, and negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So because I'm flipping and factoring at the same time, I'm actually going to write that in my denominator. x minus 2 times x plus 1. Okay, and if you need to do, if you need to just like factor it first and then flip it, go ahead and do that. If the flipping and factoring in the same step is too confusing, you can absolutely add that extra step. So now we're going to factor this trinomial down here, um, and it is not a basic trinomial. It's a, what I, I'm going to use what I call the slide and divide method. So I'm going to factor that down here. Let's factor 2x squared plus x minus 10. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply 2 times negative 10. So x squared plus x minus 20. And if you learned how to factor this differently, that's fine. We should get the same answer. But this is the slide and divide method. So I'm going to slide A into C. And now I need two numbers that multiply to negative 20 and add to positive 1. Well, those numbers are 5 and negative 4. So I'm going to write that out. 5 and negative 4. I just factor it like a basic trinomial. And then that number, that a value that I multiplied into c, now I'm going to divide it out of c. And I'm going to simplify those fractions right there and then slide it back into my first term. So this first uh, factor becomes 2x plus 5. I can simplify this as 2 and that becomes x minus 2. So that's how that's going to factor. 2x plus 5 times x minus 2. And now we're back to where we were on the last set of examples on 3 and 4. So I can pre-simplify or cross-cancel, however you, whatever you want to call it. So let's see, I can cancel out the 2x plus 5s. I can cancel out the x minus 2s. And I don't think I can cancel out anything else. And I'm left with 1 over... 2x minus 5 times x plus 1, and that's my answer. You can absolutely leave it in factored form. So, may leave in factored form. And that's what I always had my students do. Just leave it in factored form. Don't even worry about it. And that concludes today's notes over simplifying, multiplying, and dividing rational expressions. I hope it was helpful.